Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's another weekend and I've got some more mods for the Civic. So today we're going to move to the suspension at the back of the car. So I've got a couple things to install. So I've got this subframe brace to go on the back of the Civic. And it came with these bolts and I guess these washers or spacers that go behind it. Uh, on Civics, if you want to run a rear sway bar, you need to get one of these braces. It has uh, mounts on it to bolt the sway bar. If you put a bigger sway bar on without the brace, you can tear the subframe. So most people go to buying one of these aftermarket braces to bolt it on. I have ordered a sway bar to come, but I uh, haven't got it yet. So I'm just gonna install this stuff first. And then next you need some lower control arms that can take a sway bar as well that have the end link hole. So there's two different types of lower control arms for the Civic. So this one's eyelet type where the top of the, the bottom of the coilover actually goes through this part. The other one is like a fork and it fits over the sides, so just be careful, keep in mind when you're ordering which one you have. And these ones are just billet aluminium and they come with a polyurethane bush already. And then finally, this one's actually just a cosmetic mod. I've got some Honda EK9 Type R badges to put on the car, um, just to make it the car look a bit more Type R-ish with all the other mods I've been doing as well. So we're just gonna go to the back of the car and jack it up and put some stands and we'll take the wheels off and get started. So I was actually wrong and my Civic does have a sway bar. So first thing I'm going to have to do is uh, unbolt that one and get the subframe brace on and then also get these lower control arms off. To remove the sway bar you just need to undo this 14mm bolt here and then moving on to the lower control arm we're going to remove the bolt here holding the shock in and also this bolt where it attaches to the knuckle and then everything should fall down and we remove this bolt here on the subframe so here i'm just using the impact with the 14 mil socket it's just much quicker to get the bolts out this way rather than doing it by hand. The sway bar bolts are a 12 mil. The bottom of the car was really dirty so I got a wire brush just to clean off the dust and the dirt because I wanted to paint it. And then I just got some wax and grease remover just to clean the surface before I painted it. Unfortunately I didn't record painting it but I just did it in gloss black. Okay, so with this subframe brace, it looks like you can't use the factory sway bar on it. And I did some other research looking at other bars as well. And this hole here is meant for the upgraded sway bar. So these two holes here are meant for the sway bar mount on this side and the other. And then I thought, oh, well, what if I drill and tap some other holes further over 
and I just mocked it up in the car and then the end link wasn't close to bolting up. And then even if you elongate the brackets here to try and pick up this second hole, because of the this bend in the bracket here, it sits on an angle. So it looks like you can't use this factory sway bar on this uh, unless you get some sort of custom end bracket. But my plan was to buy the upgraded sway bar anyway but they were out of stock when I bought it. So for today, I'm not going to put the sway bar on. I'm just gonna put the brace with the lower control arms in. And then later when I get the sway bar, then I can put it on. So now I'm moving on to putting this brace in. And you gotta get that little bracket and put it in behind the brace when you install it. So you just gotta get that first bolt started and threaded into where the old sway bar mount used to be and then it will make its way through and start threading into that bracket. The bottom one's a bit different. You gotta start threading it into the body and then it goes through and you gotta chuck a nut on the other side just like you can see here and do it up. It's actually a 13 mil. Then you can bring the lower control arm up and then put the bolt in. If you try to do the lower control arm first, it's too hard to hold that bracket inside. Here I'm just going to the other side, you can actually see me putting it in. These bolts I suggest you do by hand um, just because you have to thread it through the body and then the bracket, you don't want to cross thread anything. Then you got to chuck the nut on the back of the bottom one and do it up with a 13mm. When you're doing the lower control arm up, you'll have to use the factory bolt. To get the bolt in where it attaches to the knuckle, you're gonna have to jack up the lower control arm just to slip that bolt in. It's also a good idea why the suspension arm still jacked up to do the bolts up to spec. This way that everything's tight at the angle that the suspension's actually going to be traveling when it's under load. Unfortunately, the first bit of this footage got lost, but uh, you just need to pry up the badge on the front here and move the two plastic clips that hold it in. You can see I've got some extra double-sided adhesive on that badge there because it's flatter compared to the original Honda one. The plastic tabs do line up in the hole. You just need to clean the surface with some wax and grease remover first before you stick it down. The rear badge is also just clipped on, the same as the front, so you just need to remove these two plastic clips as well. This one doesn't have any holes, so you need to line it up yourself. So 
So that's with the Type R badge on the back now. Alright guys, that wraps up another video. It's a bit disappointed that I couldn't get the stock rear sway bar to bolt on. And now I'm just going to have to wait to get another aftermark one to put on there. Everything lined up and bolted in, but it was a lot more difficult than I anticipated, especially with getting that bracket inside there. And the bolt has to thread through the factory body and then through the other piece. Um, it's not perfect. I'm not sure how like the hard race ones go, um, but in terms of difficulty, it wasn't super easy but um certainly manageable and for the price they will look all right and hopefully with the new lower control arms and the hardened bushes hopefully it it has less deflection and i can uh, handle a bit harder and also with the type i badges so i'm happy with how they look but the the badge on the front looks a bit out of place because the bonnet the paint on the bonnet is is so bad <laughs> compared to how new the badge is. So hopefully later when I get a new bonnet, it'll look a lot better, but um, the back looks really good. Pretty happy with that. So like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys for the next video. Cheers.